In this episode, I'm going to share with you the seven steps to mastering the fundamentals of Python. And these are the same steps that I guide my students through, and I guarantee you, if you spend a little bit of time on each of these steps, you are going to master the foundations of the fundamentals of Python. Welcome back guys to another episode of Code with Josh. If you're new here, you guessed it, I'm Josh. And here I break down complex tech jargon into terms you can easily understand. Now before I get into today's episode, the first link in the description is a handcrafted Python guide that I've made for you. And I give this to all my students on their first day of class. So head on down and grab yourself a copy. It's the first link in the description. All right, what I'm thinking now is I'm gonna make future episodes, the few after this, and I'm gonna break down each of these steps for you guys to help you actually master these steps. In today's episode, I'm gonna try and quickly go through these steps to help you guys get a running start. Now, let's take a look at these. I'm gonna put them somewhere on my screen, maybe here, maybe here. These are the steps you need to master them. Let's take a look at step one, the basics, the basics of Python. And here is where you are gonna spend the first week working with variables, the basic built-in Python functions, and conditional statements. Let's take a look at what I mean. As you enter week one, the first thing you should be working with is variables. Now, literally, a variable is equal to a value. Or, long story short, it's a word that holds a value. That's it. So, here you can see I have two variables. Years and months. The value of years is two. The value of months is six. I'm then using the Python print function, and I'm printing off a string, and I'm using my variables. We work with variables when we work with changing data, data that could change or potentially change in the future. That's the first part of the first week. Now that you know variables, let's look at the built-in Python functions. Only a few, pick four. Here are six basic Python functions. You can pick any of these and start to experiment with them. I've included what they do, so pause the video and take a look. All right, the most basic form that you're gonna use is print, try to use use int, try to use input, and if you could use all of them, that's great, but you are going to throughout your Python journey. The last part of the first week is conditional statements. Now, learning conditions is key because a condition is really what a computer does to operate. A computer only understands two things, zero and one, or yes and no. A condition is literally, if this is true, do this else otherwise do this instead. That's the basics of a conditional statement. Here's week one all put together, right? You can see I'm using variables, I'm using functions in my conditional statement, right? What are my variables? Pause the video and try and take a look. You have channel, action, and age. Now when I run my code, let's see what we can expect. There you go. Subscribe to Code with Josh. You should be subscribing to Code with Josh if you're ready to learn Python. And then enter an age. It's triggering my input. So I'm gonna enter an age, let's say 26, enter. It says you are an adult. My condition was true, it was met. That's pretty cool. Now that you have the basics covered, we're going into week two. Week two, I want you guys to focus on loops in Python. Now we have two loops in Python. We have the while loop and the for loop. Let's check them out. Let's first talk about the while loop. Now the while loop continues to repeat. It's kind of like a condition. It repeats while this is true. This code executes. When this expression becomes false or it's not true, this is the first thing that's going to run when the loop breaks or stops. That's the first loop. Now, as for the second loop is the for loop. Now, we use the for loop to iterate through something or go through something. So we start with for, we make an element. An element is like a variable you can use inside the for loop. And then we say, what do we want to search through? So for example, if I want to go through this variable name, it's going to go J, A, M, E, S. Every letter, I can do something with that letter. That's why we use a for loop, to go through something. 
Now I spoke about the two types of loops. Here up top I have a for loop. So I'm going through for every number in my variable phone. If the current number is not in my variable valid, print wrong. Right? It's, it's not a phone number if it's not in that variable. My other one, I'm asking for a name. And while my input name is not done, I'm going to print welcome that person's name. Then asking for the another name. Let's run it. Let's start off with our phone number. Let's say uh, 145892L. Enter. Ooh. Error, wrong number. That's because I said L, L is not a number. For name, let's start off with Josh. Okay, enter another name, Bob. Okay, enter another name, done. Ah, my loop stopped. That's how loops can work. Week three is a fun week. You got the basics down and you've played with some Python functions. Now it's time to create or define your own functions. That's what you're gonna be doing in week three. Let's check it out. As we approach this week, this is a fundamental topic of creating and building your own functions. Now, long story short, a function is literally just reusable code with a unique name. You already know functions in Python, print, Input, int, those are Python reserved functions. Now you make your own. To do this, we use the Python def keyword followed by the name of your function and then any parameters that your function may need to run. A parameter is essentially a value that you're gonna give that you can use inside your function as like a variable. Anytime you call your function, this code is going to run. If you have two parameters, two variables, you then need to give your function two live pieces of data that your function can use. Those are called your parameters and arguments. That's how we can get our function all set up. That's what you should really be focusing on as you enter week three. It's starting to get more challenging. Here I have that function. So I just took what you learned in the last week and I put it in a function called phone checker. Phone checker takes phone, which is actually my input. Now when I call my function, giving it my input, my code is gonna run the same exact way as it did before run the code, your function is called phone checker, asking for that number, let's enter a number, there we go, and then also prints off the number. That is you building a reusable block of code. That reusable block is a function. Full disclaimer, if you guys don't know where to start, that's okay. I have three Python courses that I've dedicated and made for you. Over 24 hours of content, taking you from beginner all the way to advanced concepts in no time. Well, in 24 hours. They're in the description. Head on down and give them a check. You have just about all the basics of any programming language. But in week four, this is the final week of the true basics, I want us to look at data structures. They are the ways we can structure data in Python. In Python, we got four. Let's look at them. Week four, you've mastered most of the fundamentals. Now you need to learn how to structure your data. Python has four main ways to structure your data. I already have episodes out on this, so head on over and check out some previous episodes if you're interested in that. Now, you have four main types. You have a list, you have a tuple, you have a dictionary, and you have a set. A list has all these elements that we can iterate and we can go through. I can add new elements or remove elements. A tuple is kind of like a list, but you can't change it at all. So think of like coordinates. If I change a coordinate, it's a completely new location. The same thing applies to a tuple. A dictionary is a combination of key value pairs. I have a key and this key has a value. Together I have one, two key value pairs. And the last data structure is what we call a set. Now a set is pretty much like a list, but it does not allow for duplicate values. That's all you need to know for now. Spend this week playing with data structures. Together you have Four. Here are your four data structures. I've started with a list, a tuple, a dictionary, and a set. 
and then I'm printing off. Lists in tuples allow for indexing so I can get a certain position from them, like position four, position one, or zero. For a dictionary, I need to give the dictionary key to unlock the value. And then a set, well, we can't index a set. So I'm just gonna run this. The first three are gonna work. There you go, five, 255, subscribe, cannot index a set. Oh, did you see that? Subscribe. Okay, so those are our four data structures. That's what you're working with in this week. As you enter the fifth week of mastering the fundamentals of Python, you are now gonna learn what makes Python truly special. It is an object-oriented programming language. In week five, I want us to focus on OOP and classes. Let's check out classes and inheritance. Now that you've really cracked on, you are now ready to approach that OOP that I just mentioned. Now, if we look here, OOP, what it really is, is we have a blueprint, or I have a class, car. Now, car is a very broad term. If I tell you, hey, look at the car outside, there's a hundred cars. Be more specific. When you are more specific, that is what we call an object. So you can see here I have three objects. Each object has its own attributes, its own properties that make it special. But at the end of the day, this object is still a car. That's the true basics of OOP. Spend week five trying to learn object-oriented programming. If you're waiting for this, I have an episode out on this. I have two, actually. And in a few weeks, as a part of this series, you're gonna get some more additional content on that. Here I've put together a class called Animal. Now a class, remember, is like a blueprint. Inside this blueprint, I have methods, and then I have properties. A property is just a variable in a class, a method is just a function in a class. They're literally the same thing. Variable, function, property, method. I can then create different objects from the same class, giving them the three arguments, the three values that my init function has. In order to use a method, a method must be linked to an object. When I run my code, we're gonna see a few things happening here. There you go, animal dog Vietnam. That is the first object dog. And then I have animal tiger Nepal. That's the second object. And then I'm doing dog elder. It says prime years because the dog, their age is four. If my age is greater than seven, it's not, so prime years. That is our concept of object oriented programming. Now that you've gotten a chance to play with OOP and see what makes Python really special, let's progress into some broader range of topics. You've now entered week six. In this week, I want us to learn about modules, creating your own modules to organize your code, as well as using some pre-built Python modules. I'll show you quickly what I mean. You are now ready to approach modules. Essentially, modules are just extra code to complete tasks. You can import this code into your project. Now, you can make your own module to structure your code and hold all the functions or classes you make and then import that into your main file. Or Python has pre-built modules you can use too. So for example, you could use the popular one random for working with random numbers, pandas for working with data analysts, you have Pygame for creating 2D games or NumPy also for data, right? All of these are like pre-built Python modules that are easy that you can bring in and use. As for the next week, you are now having to use modules in your Python code. Here are just two super basic Python modules, random and time. They are both built into Python. Random allows the computer to generate a random number, and then we use time anytime you wanna work with time, like how much time has passed in Python. So in the first one, it's kinda like, I'm gonna enter a guess. If my guess matches the computer's guess, which is a random number between zero and five, I win. Otherwise, I just wanna print my guess in the computer's number. In the next one, I've actually made a countdown clock. 
Every time my while loop runs, I'm gonna print off the second, and then I'm using the sleep function, and that's from time. It's gonna pause one second before counting down. Let's run this. My guess is gonna be three, enter. Uh, the, I guess three, computer guessed four, and then you can see my countdown clock has just started. That started counting. That is pretty cool. Those are modules in Python. This brings you to your final week of mastering the fundamentals. Now, this last week, week seven, you're not gonna master everything. You're not. You really have done that in the first six weeks. Those are the core six weeks you needed to understand the fundamental concepts. In week seven, I want you to play around with some advanced Python libraries. Here is where you can take everything you've learned, and it's gonna be much easier to grasp these advanced concepts while working with advanced modules. Here's just a few of them. I'm only covering a few advanced modules here, but I have Pandas, which we use for data analysis, there's Pygame used to make 2D games in Python, NumPy, Scikit-Learn, PyQt, which is app development, and Django. These are just a few of those advanced modules. Find something you're passionate about and choose a module based around that. It makes it for a much more enjoyable learning experience. For obvious reasons, I can't cover everything in this episode. How am I doing on time? Did I cover all the steps to master the fundamentals? I truly hope I had. I've only brushed the surface here today, guys, right? In the next few episodes of Code with Josh, I'm going to be breaking these down to guide you through the steps along the way, giving you some projects to help build. Hey, if you're new here, you're looking to learn, I assume that's why you're here. Please support the channel and hit the subscribe button. That seriously helps helps me out in the like button too. If you want a handcrafted guide that I've made for you, it's the first link in the description. Head on down there. In the description, I also have courses. I have three full-fledged Python courses with over 24 hours of Python content that I've made for you, taking you from the basics all the way to these advanced modules you can use for your projects. Well, I hope you got something from today's episode. I certainly enjoyed having you here. Thank you for tuning in for my episode of Code with Josh, and uh, I will see you in next week's episode.